Uh, good morning, YouTubers. Uh, several months ago, uh, I did a, a video on my method of uh, wiring and installing the Porta Switch machine, uh, signals on your layout, bicolor LEDs on your control panel, and controlling those with a single throw of a double pole, double throw toggle switch. Uh, I received uh, several comments and several questions uh, which led me to believe that maybe my original video wasn't quite as detailed uh, as it could have been. So anyway, I decided to just do a short one, or hopefully a short one, uh, and, and maybe uh, make it a little bit more uh, detailed on, on the way I do it. Uh, here's a diagram, but I'll get back to the diagram in a moment. First of all, I want to show you what you're going to need in order to do this. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a tortoise switch machine. Uh, and with that, you need an edge connector, and I'll get to that in a moment. But there's an edge connector. You're going to need a, a, a terminal strip or barrier strip. Uh, they come in several different styles. I'll show you those. And you're going to need uh, some a toggle switch. In this particular case, double throw, I'm sorry, double pull, double throw, on, on, which means no matter which way you flip it, either this way or that way, it's only two positions, it's on both ways. It's always live, and you need that for your tortoise switch machine, which I'll tell you in just a moment. Now, there are other types of toggle switches. You need also six connectors on the bottom, six terminals. This is a similar toggle switch, but it's an on-off on, which means it has a center position, which is off, and then on again. You don't really want to use this. You can, but you don't want to, because the tortoise switch machine is a stall switch machine, which means it has power running to it all the time, and as long as there's power, it will keep pressure on your uh, switch to make sure it stays in the position in which you have it uh, thrown to. So it'll either stay lined with the main or lined with the, the uh, uh, diverging route. <clears throat> if you take the power off of it, sometimes it'll back off and, and, and it'll go out of alignment slightly, which uh, could cause derails and will cause derails because bear in mind that the power that runs this is not the same thing as your track power. So you're going to be running trains at the same time you have maybe your your toggle switch turned off. So anyway, you're just better off using the on-on. It's easier that way. Uh, here's how you wire them. If you look at the bottom of them, there's the six terminals. You've got your positive and your negative, or negative, but it doesn't make any difference, but you have it coming in. And, and, and all this stuff is DC electric, and, and these switch machines and your LEDs, they all run on polarity. So all you're doing is reversing the polarity. So you have to have a switch, or, or I'm sorry, a jumper going from this terminal to this terminal and another one going from this terminal to this terminal. All that does is when you have your, your toggle switch in this position, it's going to be positive and negative. When you have it in this position, it's going to be negative and positive. So it's just reversed. Pretty simple. And then you've got your wires that are going out to your bicolor LEDs for your control panel. And this will complete one circuit, which I'll get to in a moment. You need barrier strips to handle all your wiring. It's easier that way. It, it just keeps it neater. A couple of different types. You can use these. These are a little bit bigger, maybe easier to work with. These are a little bit smaller. Uh, and, and, and because uh, uh, on your layout, if you have a, a switch and you want to signal it properly, you need three signals because you've got two for the main and one for the diverging route. So you're going to need groups of three. Just remember, these barrier strips, they're only connected electrically the top to the bottom. They're not connected side to side at all. That's the reason they're called barrier strips. They're connected here to here, but not here to here. So you, you, in order to make this work properly, you have to connect them to each other. The way you do that is you use a jumper. You can buy these jumpers. They come in a strip like this. You just cut them to what you need. In our particular case, we're going to need three groups of three. That's your three common wires, your three red wires, and your three green wires. So you need to connect three to each other. You can do. You just chop off, cut it right there where there's three of them, 
and you just install it in there. These, so these three are not connected electrically. If you don't want to buy these things, you don't have to. You can make your own, just get some uh, crimp terminals and crimp them together. Now these three are connected to each other, which is all you need to do. But I'll get to that when we get to the, to the wiring diagram. Last but certainly not least, you're going to need your LEDs for your control panel. Now, you use bicolor LEDs. They're two colors, red and green. Uh, when the polarity is one way, they're red. When the polarity is the other way, they're green. Now, you have to wire these, and you have to do it in a, in a specific way. When you get these LEDs, you're going to notice one leg of the LED coming out, out of the light is a little longer than the other one. What I do a lot of times is I trim off the short one a little shorter. That way there's no question about it. But you're going to want to connect either the two long legs with each other or you can connect the two short legs. It doesn't make any difference. You can do one or the other. I just do the two long legs. It's easier. You just solder them together. Now before you solder them, if you intend to use a little thing like this, Here it is on, on an old control panel. You can just see it. They just punch into the control panel. And the, wire, the, the LEDs stick up through the inside of them. If you intend to do that, which hopefully you can see it. I'm not sure what's getting on the screen. But anyhow, I'm talking about these little things. If you intend to do that, there's a little plastic fitting that has to go underneath uh, the LED. So you have to slip that on before you solder anything. If you, once you solder it, you can't slip it on. All that does is hold it into this thing. You just push it up in there, and it holds it right into that. Pretty easy. But anyway, the two long legs, they have to be, two of the same legs have to be joined together. That way, when one's red, the other's green. If you didn't do it that way, they'd both be red or both be green. So you have to do it that way. Now, here is... Hopefully a simplified version of my wiring diagram. There's probably other ways to do this. I'm not an electrical genius. I'm just telling you this works, okay? You can do it however you want, but this works. A, a tortoise switch machine basically has three circuits in it. You have your power to run just the switch. That runs off of power of terminals one, and terminal eight. You've got, you got eight terminals on the bottom of this switch machine. You can see one through eight. Now, I'm going to talk about this for just a second. When this machine is installed underneath your table and you're trying to solder to it, you're soldering over your head. That's pretty difficult for me. I can't do it. You know, I don't like getting under the table much anyway. So I bought these little things. They're called edge connectors. They allow you to solder wherever you want to solder, just, just solder them at your e leisure, and then all you do is slip it right onto here. But if you don't want to buy these, that's okay. You can solder it directly there. But, but there's eight terminals, one through eight. One through eight. Terminal number one and terminal number eight are the ones that power this switch machine, make it throw the switch. So coming out of your double pole, double throw toggle switch, out of one side in the middle here, one of the two middle terminals, boom, boom, you run a wire to a leg of the LED. So the power comes out of here, goes into the LED, goes through the LED, and from the other leg, you run it right around here to terminal number one. Or eight, doesn't make any difference, but one of, the, one of these two terminals. From the other one, you run a wire right back to the other side of the toggle switch. That completes that one circuit. The other circuit, there are other two circuits in there, run off of terminal 2, 3, and 4, and 5, 6, and 7. We're only going to use 2, 3, and 4. There's probably a way you can use 5, 6, and 7. I've never done it. I don't know. I, I haven't messed with it. But this is going to turn on your signal lights the proper way. Okay? So... Once again, if you do it exactly the way I have it here, it will work. Out of the first terminal, you're, well, first of all, let's go back to the signal. 
this is for purposes of this demonstration this signal is a single head two light signal red over or green over red you can get signals that have three lights or four lights I, many lights as you want I guess I only know how to do it and I only know it works with a two light it may work with more I've not done it works with two you can also get a double headed signal it's got two lights over and two more lights and, and that'll work fine you just have to wire slightly different but it's basically the same principle so anyway coming out of the bottom of that signal you're gonna have three wires one of these wires probably the common is going to have a resistor on it. Leave that resistor on there, otherwise you'll burn your LEDs out. You have to have a resistor. So if it doesn't come with a resistor, you need to put a resistor on there or you'll burn them out because they're very voltage sensitive. 9 volts or 10 volts or 12 volts, burn them right out. So you take the green wire. Uh, coming out the bottom, you've got a green wire, a red wire, and a black wire. The black wire is the common. The green wire obviously is for the green light. The red wire is obviously for the red light. You just take the green wire, put it to this first screw. Now bear in mind, you're going to have a jumper in there that connects this to this to this because you're going to have three signals on your layout. I only show one, but you're going to have three because you need three signals for each switch. And you're going to have a spot here that you're going to need three wires for here, three wires for here, and three wires for here. So you take your green and run it there. Out of the first terminal, or really the second terminal on your, on your tortoise switch machine, you're going to make that the green terminal. It can be the red, doesn't make any difference. You just have to run, if it's a green one, you run it to here and the green wire to there. If it's red, you run it to there and the red wire to there. The common's going to go over here. I'll, I'll get to the common in a moment. But on your, on your second light, wherever you have that, you're going to run the green to here, the red to here, the common to here. On the third light, you're, you're going to reverse that because you're going to have, when you're signaling on a railroad, you got two lights that are going to be the same color and one's going to be the opposite color. So you, you can't have all three of them, otherwise they'd all three be green. So you're going to take the red from the third one and run it over here to the green. That way it's it lit up. When, when these two are green, it's red. And you're going to take the green one and put it there so that when these two are red, it's going to be green. Pretty simple. You just have to adjust uh, how, which light is going to turn what color. You, you, you determine that by just moving the wires around. But, but two of them are going to be the same color, and, and then the, the third one's going to be the third color. Okay. Now, as far as the common is concerned, that comes off the, the fourth terminal. And once again, these lights are polarity sensitive. So if you do it this way, they'll work. I'm just telling you. If you have your positive and negative, and I'll tell you how to determine that in a moment, but you're going to take your uh, 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 fourth terminal and you're going to run it over to the negative side. And then from the positive side, you're going to run a jumper right over here to this common. Now bear in mind, you got three common wires coming off the lights. This is going to feed them all because they're connected to each other. If for some reason your lights, your signal lights don't light up, just reverse them. Take this wire, put it here. Take this wire and put it here. And then they'll work. LEDs are polarity sensitive. They'll work one way, but they don't work the other direction. So you have to run them the right way. Now, to determine, and if you hook it this way, negative, positive. To determine the which is negative, which is a positive, take your, your, your uh, power supply and take a voltmeter and hook the positive lead off of, 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 uh, off of your voltmeter and hook it to a wire coming out of your, your uh, power supply and hook the negative lead to the other wire if in fact the voltage on your meter shows 10 volts, 12 volts, whatever it is, then you got it hooked up the right way. If it shows negative 10 or 12 volts, then you got it hooked up backwards, that's all. So you'd have to reverse the wires. It's pretty simple. Same thing here, because remember, you want to follow your voltage. Negative, that's negative. Now you X these, so this one's going to be negative, this one's going to be positive. Now, when you get to your, your uh, installation on your control panel, you're going to drill a little hole, you're going to put this grommet in there, and, and, and when you throw that switch, 
and, and or throw the toggle switch and the switch out on your railroad, if it doesn't line up the direction you want, for instance, if, if you want, if your toggle switch is this way, if you want it to be down, and that means all your switches are aligned for the main, and, and you do that, and this the switch that's here is, is lined for the diverging route, just take your switch and rotate it. <laughs> then it'll work, because you've reversed the polarity. Same thing is true with the lights. If you have your light on your control panel, and when you throw the switch, and it's lined the way you want it, but the lights don't agree. In other words, if you got it lined for the main, but, but on your control panel, if it shows a red light line for the main, just pull the light out of the bottom of this thing, like that, turn it around, and plug the other one in there. You just change the colors. You don't have to rewire anything. You just change the colors. Now it'll work right. So I think I covered everything. I hope I did. Just pay attention to this diagram. I'll, I'll let you see it for a moment. If you do it this way, I guarantee it will work. Now, you might want to think about how much voltage you use. When I say 9 volts, you can use 12 volts, you can use 5 volts. But remember, the more voltage this you thing, pump, the faster that tortoise switch machine is going to turn and the brighter your LEDs are going to be. That's number one. Number two, remember, on all of these signals, you have to have a resistor on that common wire. Otherwise, you're going to burn them out. You don't need a resistor on these because the tortoise switch machine is a resistor. Remember I said it's always on? That's the resistor in the line. So as long as you have these two LEDs on your control panel hooked to nothing but your tortoise switch machine, you don't need a resistor. The tortoise mach switch machine is the resistor. Hopefully this answers all of your questions. If you got any more, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.